evening, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. It's going to be good tonight. I guess every night that we show up here to do something is good. It's not like one's better than the other. It's all good because it all contains resurrection life. So that's good. We've got some announcements real quick. This is the week that we celebrate the one-year anniversary of being grounded and rooted here, and we ain't going anywhere. We're going to continue to love the hell out of people's lives. So we're going to start with that Friday, July 29th, 7 to 9, campfire worship. I know that we've had some days to where at times it's been like, man, this feels good. We took the dog for a walk last night. I was like, oh, my goodness, this feels amazing. You could feel the sprinkles coming down from the trees. Let's hope Friday's like that because I think, what was it, yesterday, Angie, it was supposed to be like 81 and you walked outside and you're like, no. No, the humidity made it seem way different. So here's the thing. We're still having campfire worship and we'll either have it in the back or we'll have it in here. Either which way, it's going to be from 7 to 9 and we're going to worship. And we're going to expect things to happen in people's lives. I I don't want this to be treated as, well, it's just something that we're going to do to celebrate. Well, it is. But at the same time, things are still going to happen when we worship. Things are still going to happen Saturday night, the next night, the 30th, 7 p.m. In here will be Evangelist Kim Ware. I think she's going to be talking about the importance of your anointing in this region. I'm telling you two things. Come to bring your supply, but come with an empty cup ready to receive what you need. So you're coming to receive, but you're coming contending for everything that God has for you. And you're coming to bring your supply of faith to mix with others so things can happen. Next morning, the 31st, we are going to be in here at normal time, church at the MHC, 10 a.m. Afterwards, we are going to have a church picnic celebrating that one-year anniversary. Just like the campfire worship, it, we might have it out there. If it's too hot, we're going to bring in here. We're going to set up tables and chairs. We're going to celebrate in here. There are sign-up sheets out in the foyer. Um, I know one of them is for how many people are going to be coming in your family. Another one is going to be side dishes, dessert slash potato salad, beans, whatever it is that you want to bring. I know that I've been told to make sure that you bring enough to feed more than just you and your family. We're expecting people to come here. So other than that, my friends, I am ready to get into this. So I'm going to have my amazing friend Angie come and do what she does and pray from the heart. Because when she prays, things happen, my friends. So she's going to pray. Then we're going to enter into worship. Welcome online. Welcome online. Share this video. Get it out there to your friends. 635. So it's about that time that people start eating supper and checking their phones and seeing what's going on for the day anyways. It's a perfect opportunity for them to see what you're watching and what you're sharing to where instead of garbage coming across Facebook and trash talking people and all this stuff, they're able to actually see life and hear life. Welcome, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. You know, it's so, you know, we feel it outside, how hot it is. We feel it hitting our flesh. I want us to be that on fire on the inside, working out. That's the kind of fire and heat that we're going to bring. So I want you all just to keep pondering on that, pressing in with your personal prayers, your personal time with Jesus, where it's in the morning, afternoon, at night, when, whenever you get into that moment. Just talk to him and ask him about bringing in that fresh, roaring fire. Let it get on out. So, Father, we're just going to declare it right now that this place 
is on fire. Each and every person in this place, each and every person watching online, anybody associated with this place is on fire for you, God. And we are going to step out into that fire everywhere we go, spreading it. So like I, I keep coming back to that vision that I had of tsunamis, but it wasn't of water. It was tsunami waves of fire. And that's what we are. So Lord, we thank you for you putting that in us. Jesus, everything you did for us on that cross, giving us that power and authority, along with just washing away every sin, purifying our bodies, cleansing us to white as snow. And Holy Spirit, you're always guiding us, holding our hand through things that we need to accomplish accomplished by the word of our Father. So we are going to keep going into that, being that tsunami of fire, but also jumping down in this river, going deeper and deeper with you, Lord. And Lord, we have special prayer requests for tonight for Mama Madge. Lord, we are going to lift her up and I'm going to speak and declare complete healing and restoration in her body and strengthening in her body. No more sickness can come into that body or anywhere near her. And then also for Dion's brother-in-law, his cardiovascular issues, Lord, we give those to you. You get in there and you work what you got to do, healing him, restoring him, giving him that miracle. And then also Dion's sister. Lord, we lift her up. Again, perfect restoration. Just have you... How, how you have created her. And Lord, we take away any, any spirit of fear that tries to come against them also because we know that's not from you. You are of power, love, and a sound mind. And I know you are wrapping around them right now as we are praying for them, strengthening them, and giving each one of them their miracle tonight. So we thank you, Lord. And for also for anybody that is tuning in online, Lord, I am pleading the blood of Jesus over each and every one of them as well. So if you have anything that you would like, just personal prayer for, just reach out online, comment, or you can call 573 216 1871 or prayer at two guys in a Bible.com. Because each one of those methods, our Father is watching, and Holy Spirit is going to move, and He's going to let one of us know who needs to get a hold of you and pray. Because that's who our Father is. So we thank you right now, Father. We are going to just praise and we are going to worship you. We are going to dance. We're going to sing. Sending our love and blessings right up to you because that's what you do for us each and every day with your grace and your mercy and your love. So we thank you right now. Keep our ears open. Keep our hearts open, ready for that word, your beautiful, powerful word. Give us that wisdom and revelation as it hits our spirit. So we thank you, Father. And in Jesus' mighty name, we all say, Amen. Amen. Come on, let's stand. Let's just worship the King of Kings.
the Lord of Lords. Come on, just talk to him for a minute. Come on, there's power in prayer. There's power in agreement, so let's exercise that power for just a moment. Whatever you're believing for, we just all stand in agreement that that will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Come on. <clears throat> come on, do you believe in the power of prayer tonight? Come on. Who knows that prayer changes the very course of where things are headed? Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, just lift him up tonight. Lift him up tonight. Oh, yeah. oh, we give you glory. Come on, he is worthy. Come on, just lift him up tonight. Oh, yeah. oh we give you glory. Come on, we lift our hands in the sanctuary. Oh, we give you praise, Jesus. <laughs> we give you praise, Jesus. Oh, for you are here. Oh, for you are here. Oh, we give you praise and honor. Oh. Come on, do you feel him tonight? Come on, he is here right now, church. He is here right now. Come on, just lift your hands to heaven and just thank him. Thank him for what he is going to do in your life, for what he's already done. Come on. Oh. Come on, there's power in thanking him. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, we lift our hands in the sanctuary. We lift our hands in the sanctuary and we bless the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, help me tonight. Help me tonight. Come on. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. 
joy in the Holy Ghost. Come on. We declare joy in the Holy Ghost. We declare joy in the Holy Ghost. We declare joy. Sing it. We declare joy. We declare joy. We declare joy. We declare joy. We lift up our hands in the sanctuary. Lift up our hands in the sanctuary. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on. We lift up our hands in the sanctuary. Lift up our hands. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on. We're going to praise him tonight. Come on. Come on. Come on, I want you to shout if he's been good to you. Come on. Come on, I want you to shout if he's been good to you. Come on. Come on, let's tell him tonight. Ah. Come on, say this. Well, he's been so good to me. Come on. Well, he's been so Come on. Well, he's been so good to me. Well, he's been so good to me. Well, he's been so good to me. Well, he's. Well, he's. Woo! Well, he's. Ha <laughs> ha! Come on! Well, he's been so good to me. Well, he's been. Hey! Well, he's. Well, he's. Come on! Well, he's. Come on, you sing it. Come on. Well, he's been. Come on. Well, he's been so good to me. Been so good to me. Come on, you say. Well, he's been. Come on. Well, he's. Yeah. Well, he's. Well, he's. to me well is well is well is ah. well is been so good to me ah. say this oh I've got the fire of the Holy Ghost come on I've got the fire of the Holy Ghost I've got the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hey, hey. <laughs> Come on, do you have it? I got the fire of the Holy Ghost. I got the fire of the Holy Ghost. I got the fire of the Holy Ghost. Come on, lift up your hands. Sing it. We lift up our hands in the sanctuary. Lift up our hands in the sanctuary. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. We lift up, lift up our hands in the, bless the Lord. Come on, every hand raised, sing it out, come on. We lift up our hands in the sanctuary, lift up our hands in the sanctuary. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. <laughs> come on, we lift up our hands. Lift up our hands. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on, lift up a shout of praise tonight. Come on, lift up a shout of praise tonight. Woo! Ha 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 ha. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, he has been good. He has been good. Come on, he has been good. He has been good. Come on, somebody. He has been good. He has been good. Hallelujah. Whoo. Come on, and he's going to continue to be good. Come on. Do you believe it? He's going to continue to be good. 
Hallelujah. Otherwise, he's not God. Come on. He's going to continue to be good because otherwise he's not the Father. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hey guys, we got a lot of people that call into the ministry asking for healing, and uh, tonight I'm going to go ahead and pray for a guy named Jerry. God healed Jerry of cancer a few years ago. It was a miracle, healed. That cancer tried to come back, and we are declaring no in Jesus' name. It has no right to his body. So I would like all you who are here and everyone online to agree with me that Jerry is cancer-free. That's right. Our God is a good God. Our God is a good God. Yep. Another fellow I talked to named Moses. Wonderful man of God. Wonderful guy. He needs prayer too. So we're not getting into specifics. I just want y'all to again agree. Moses is healed head to toe. Divine healing head to toe. Same as Madge. Madge is healed head to toe. She will walk in divine healing. Yes. She will. She has many days. She's got a lot of work left to do on this earth. She does. And same with your brother-in-law and sister. Divine healing head to toe. So, Father God, we, we look down our hearts, Lord. We offer ourselves with an adi- ourselves to you with an attitude of gratitude. We thank you, Lord. We posture ourselves just in, in love and thankfulness to you, Lord, for what you do, what you've done for us already. We give you thanks. We give you praise. And there's somebody either in here or online, I'm not sure. I think you're dealing with some sort of abscess, infection. I don't know where. God's been speaking to me about that today. So if you're in here and that's you, tonight's your night, right? You can claim that healing. It's yours. If you're online, just take it. It's yours. The price has already been paid. Jesus paid it all for you. You are healed in Jesus' name. You are healed in Jesus' name. You can, con- you can comment on the line. Somebody will be, will be monitoring that. We can call and pray with you if you need. But God wants you to know that you are on his mind tonight. Yes. You are on his mind. He's thinking about you. You know, nine billion people in the world, and he's thinking about you. You're, inc- you're included. He's thinking about you. You are healed in Jesus' name. So bless you guys. And I'm sure Nathan has a wonderful word for us. Thanks, Pastor. Yeah, and, and real quick to piggyback off what you just said, because as soon as you said that, the Lord said that somebody has an infection of the mind. There, somebody has an infection of the mind that is affecting how they build relationships. And I'm not talking about a man-woman relationship. I'm talking about a family relationship. I'm talking about a friend relationship. So there's somebody that the Lord says, we're going to heal that infection of the mind. You're not going to be lied to anymore. The devil is not going to lie to you about a certain family member anymore. So right now, in the name of Jesus, that is done. In the name of Jesus, that infection is cast out right now. In the name of Jesus, you will think clearer. You will will have clarity of the mind right now, forevermore, in Jesus' name. That's good stuff right there. Man. Yes, it is. You know, I was, <clears throat> growing up, I used to help my grandfather cut wheat. Used to ride with him as a little kid, fall asleep in the cab of the combine. Got a little bit older, I would sit on his lap and drive. Got a little bit older, I would sit on his lap and look back and he was sleeping. To the point to where I got trusted to 
kind of do it on my own. And then by the time I was a young teenager, I'm going with him from different states because he did custom harvesting and I'm driving that combine. And I got to see them. He had land in Alva where I grew up. And, <coughs> you know, when we think of farmers, we think of whatever they're planting, they're going to make sure that that seed is going into what? Good ground. You know, if they want to produce a certain um, crop, they're going to make sure that that crop is going to grow good in that type of soil. Well, <laughs> I, I can't explain to you the importance of the ground that we're in and that we're walking on of just being a part of this ministry. I, I mean, I, I could come up with my most... <laughs> special word i could flip through that dictionary Ooh, that one sounds good or ooh, let's use this one it might even be something that i can't even pronounce on my own i still know in my heart that it's not going to hit the magnitude of where i want it to hit of how much this ministry means to me and here's the thing i know it means something to you or you wouldn't be here on a tuesday night you could be at home like the rest of the world watching their tv show and survival or whatever i don't Whatever their TV shows are, Bachelorette, Bachelor. Oh, thank God that was a long time ago because it was rigged. <laughs> you want to sow into good ground. Just like that farmer, if he's going to produce wheat or corn or whatever crops he is, he's looking for that particular soil, and he'll do whatever he can to make sure that that seed is taken care of. So when it's harvest time, it comes to him. Well, my friends, it is, just like Ricky said, it's a law where two are gathered, two or more gathered together in agreement. If I walk off this platform, gravity is going to tell me I'm going to hit that floor, and it might not look pretty. It's a law. It's going to happen. So is the law of sowing and reaping. And the thing is, is when you sow into good ground, I'm telling you, you better start cleaning out and making room for your harvest. And, and this is a ministry that I was searching for because it wasn't, a, when I looked at the word, I wanted to be able to see a ministry that I could hook up with that was doing exactly what I saw in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the book of Acts, and throughout the Bible. Well, I didn't have to search that long once I finally heard of this ministry. I looked into it, and I watched some videos, and it was a summer of healing and miracles. Imagine that in the Midwest Healing Center. And it got my attention. And I, I just want to throw this out there to you. You're talking about a ministry. The proof is in the pudding. They've had the dead raised back to life. Countless people healed, delivered, set free. And that's not even including the TV show. That's not including the, the, the ministry phone calls that Dion gets throughout the week. So what I'm saying to you is make sure that that seed that God has given to you, that you are putting it into good ground. And I'm telling you right now, this is amazing ground. This isn't good ground. This is fertile, ready to reap a harvest on your behalf, ground ministry. So I'm encouraging you tonight. Uh, we're going to go real quick, and we're just going to have a time of giving. For those of you that are online, feel free to text to give to 573-229-0820. And here's the thing. We're already blessed. We're not waiting to get anything to get blessed. We already are. But we want to be able to take that, put that, know that that's in the Father's hands and it's in his kingdom and we're able to go do more and reach further than what we're doing right now. And we will do it. So again, 573-229-0820 for those of you online. And sometime between after it's over tonight, we'll have a time to where we come up and we pray over our seed and we get it put in that bucket and we get it into good ground. Amen. So are you ready? I don't know if those of you have, uh, we're going somewhere tonight with this. So just hang on. It's called that damn mind. Yes. Our spirits are the real us. Our spirits are right now as righteous and as right as they ever will be. Now, I need you to get something before we go any further tonight. You are not what you see in the mirror. I hope you know that by now. If not, well, I'm going to tell you again because we've all had to hear stuff over and over before it clicked. And maybe that's just me. I don't know. 
The real, just me, <laughs> very well could be. The real you is not what you see in the mirror, okay? I asked a friend tonight to borrow this. Those of you who saw me carry it up, you're like, what in the world? Listen, I don't know when she canned this. Four or five years ago, my point is, is it could have been 100 years ago. It could have been 200 years ago. Where I'm going with this is whatever the contents are in this jar, which you can tell it's salsa, but whatever it is, it can set in an attic, it can set in a cellar, it can collect cobwebs and dust, and everything that is on the inside of that jar will not be touched from the stuff that's on the outside of that jar. When you got born again, you became a new creation in Christ. The inside of that jar is your spirit, man. And they'll seal this with paraffin. And it can set, and it can set, and it can set, and it can set, and it can set. And there can be dust. There can be garbage all around that jar. And what's on the outside will not get in the inside. My friends, when you got born again, that's what the Holy Ghost did to you. Do you get what I'm saying? The outside cannot affect the inside. What's going on cannot affect your spirit. Well, Nathan, I missed the mark. I sinned. He's still righteous, buddy. Well, I did this and I did that. You're you still righteous. Well, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Well, you choose. You're either a sinner or you got saved by grace. You choose. But there's a thing sometimes that goes on. See, all of heaven and everything that God is, is in you. But you'll stop the flow of seeing it in your, li in your life if you allow that mind to get dammed up. No different than a creek can be flowing. Ooh, man, though, th I'm, <laughs> this thing's flowing today. You let some little animals and some critter and some clutter get down there and dam that up, and you just stop the flow of that lake or, or that creek or whatever it is. So I'm going somewhere. Just stay with me. Our spirits are the real us. Our spirits are right now as righteous and as right as they will ever be. Inside of our born-again spirits contains all that God is himself. Perfect holiness, perfect righteousness, perfect healing, perfect peace, perfect joy. Perfection is on the inside of us. We have been made the very righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. See, that's the thing. Well, that's great. Well, how do I get that? You get into Christ and you get everything that he is and will ever be when you're in Christ. See, if it was by your performance, I would have said that. But it's not by your performance. You got in it when you got in Christ. You got qualified the moment you said, yes, Jesus. See, we've been made the very righteousness of God in Christ. If you are in Christ, then whatever is true of Jesus right now is true of you. I need you to get a hold of that because so many times we put Jesus in a different category. But that was Jesus. Do you realize that he did uh, <laughs> And I've said this before, in your praise and your worship and your adoration, we're separate. We're going to look at him and we're going to see ourselves as separate and you're praising. But when it comes to living your life as a son and a daughter of God, you're not separate. You're one. Do you get that? That means that God, as far as God is concerned, as far as his, her, his heart is that is concerning you, if you are born again, you are now the flesh and the bone Christ on this earth. So, yes, he's still here. Just look in the mirror. And now, I know people, go, you, you got to stay in the, in the middle on that, because if not, you'll have people say, so you're saying that. You're, no. Don't put words in my mouth. But you get where I'm going. See, the Bible says we're now flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. And we'll get into some translations uh, tonight of Scripture. It says heaven's kingdom realm, it's close enough to touch. Well, why is it close enough to touch? Because you're the one standing there before them, but you're also the one that is filled with that kingdom. Why do I keep going to the in Christ message, the in Christ message, the in Christ message? Because when you're presented with a demon in front of you, you better know who you are in Christ. Not because, oh, my goodness, it's scary. No. <laughs> know who you are. Not because it's a scary situation, but so you can bring deliverance to that person. 
when you're standing before a cancer, when you're standing before someone that's been given a death notice by the doctor. Well, here's the thing. Instead of you shying away and looking that as, because if not so many times, and we've, I know I've been there, I forget that I'm in Christ in that moment, and then I take myself out of Christ, and I'm not viewing it, but I'm viewing the doctor's report, and in my mind, even though I have all of heaven in me, even though I have all that resurrection power in my spirit, in my mind, I'm damning it up because I'm now letting that become bigger than the Christ is who is inside of me. We can't go there. We cannot allow ourselves to go there. So right now, if it's true of Jesus, it's true of you. Inside our born-again spirits, my friend, we lack nothing. So I always like to go into Scripture. Scripture, Scripture, Scripture. Because then if you doubt what I'm saying, well, if I give you the word about it and you doubt that, well, wasn't there a song for that called Here's Your Sign? <laughs> Some of you have heard that song. You know where I'm going. Hebrews 12, 23. Hebrews 12, 23. And as members of the church of the firstborn, all our names have been legally registered as citizens of heaven. And we have come before God who judges all and who lives among the spirits of the righteous who have been made perfect in his eyes. So there's never an opportunity where we can ever go to the Father and complain about how if you're born again, he messed up and you're not right and you're not righteous and you're not perfect. You're going to hear a... <coughs> I'm going to read that again. Let that sink in. And as members of the church of the firstborn, well, who is the firstborn among many brethren? Jesus. And the many brethren are you and I. He was the firstborn, and we're members of that. All of our names have been legally registered as citizens of heaven. And we have come before God who judges all and who lives among the spirits of the righteous, that's you and me, who have been made perfect in his eyes. He didn't say perfect in his eyes when they never had a bad day. Perfect in his eyes, whether you had a good day or a bad day, but you're still righteous. Why? Because the contents on the outside never penetrated the inside. What about 1 John 4, 17? By living in God, love has been brought to its full expression in us so that we may fearlessly face the day of judgment. Because all that Jesus now is, now is, well now is at the right hand of the Father. Now is reigning supreme, the king of the universe. Now is everything is under his feet. That now is Jesus. But it doesn't stop there. It says, so are we right now in this world. On my worst day, even on your worst day. What's Don say? On your worst day, the word is having its best day. Or on your worst day, Jesus is still having his best day. On your worst day, your spirit is still having its best day. Why? Contents on the outside, they don't get on the inside. What about Ephesians 4.24? Ephesians 4.24, and to be transformed as you embrace the glorious Christ within as your new life and live in union with him. For God has recreated you all over again in his perfect righteousness, and you now belong to him in the realm of true holiness. My friends, if you are born again in here, that is your spirit man. When I got born again, I would have loved to say th something changed on the outside. I would have loved to go from five foot one to six four. It didn't happen. And yes, I'm five one. That's what my driver's license says. So that's my story, and we're sticking to it. Who who wrote that song, Curtis? Okay. Well, well yeah, we'll say Prophet George Strait. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. To be made new in the attitude of our minds. Now, listen, this is Ephesians. What I just read was Ephesians 4.24 in the Passion. I really like it in the NIV. This is good. Ephesians 4.23 and 24 says it like this. To be made new in the attitude of your minds. So we're talking about the spirits, 
But my friend, that spirit has a relationship. And for things to work and for you to get Jesus results, that mind better be in agreement with that spirit because that spirit needs to be in agreement with the mind. You see where I'm going? Yes, your spirit's been made, made perfect. But our minds need to be in agreement with that for things to happen. Listen to this. Ephesians 4, 23 through 24 in the NIV. To be made new in the attitude of your minds and to, and to put on the new self. Created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Well, how can you put on? One translation says uh, to, to, to put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. That is like in the, uh, I think that's in the King James Version. Well, how can you put on the new man if he's already been put on? Is that like the end of the day where you take them off and hang them up in your closet and you put them back on? No. Where are you to put them on at? In your thinking. Put on the new man in your thinking because when you got born again, all of heaven moved on the inside of you. That's what changed. That's what looks identical to Jesus. Your twins. Your twins. God does not look. <laughs> the father doesn't look at Jesus and see a different righteousness in him than what he sees in you. It is identical. Why? Because it's Jesus' righteousness is what you have. But he wants you to put that on in your thinking. He wants you to think like that, to, to, to meditate like that, to ponder like that. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 through 10, For he is the complete fullness of deity living in a human form. It's talking about Jesus. And it says, And our own completeness is now found in him. We are completely filled with God as Christ's fullness overflows within us. He is the head of every kingdom and authority in the universe. My friends, you're complete in him. That work on the inside of you is done. In other words, let me put it like this. When you step over into heaven, you're not going to be any more righteous then than what you are right now. That's good news because there's a lot of people that want to put off into the future what they already possess right now. God didn't, he put it for us to enjoy here right here. See, as we can see, we've been brought to perfection and to completeness in Christ. But that's where it's found, is in Christ. All of heaven has moved into us. We are right now walking sons and daughters of glory. We carry Christ everywhere we go. Everywhere we go. Everywhere our foot takes us, miracles and the glory and the power of God shows up. Why? Because we are the ones standing there at that moment. And we can't back off and shy away on that. Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 through 8. And as you go preach this message, heaven's kingdom realm is accessible, close enough to touch. Why? Well, you're the one standing there. You must continually bring. See, because the kingdom is in you and it's close enough to touch, this is what that kingdom in you will do. You must continually bring healing to lepers and to those who are sick and make it your habit to break off the demonic presence from people and raise the dead back to life. Freely you have received the power of the kingdom, so freely release it to others. My friends, all of that is in your born-again spirit, but it can be stopped if you let your mind get in the way and think contrary to that. Even though you possess that resurrection power on the inside of you. How do I know that? You can have the power to raise the dead on the inside of you. But if you go up and you have that mindset, well, I'm not a pastor. I'm not an evangelist. I've never been to Bible school. You'll back off. Now, what stopped it? Because all of that power was in your spirit. Your stupid thinking. We have to get to that. We have to get this thing in line. My friends, all of these scriptures that I just shared with you is 100% true. It wasn't my words. It was the Bible. This is how we are right now, not what we're going to be someday when we get to heaven. Now, we all want to see the results that Jesus got for himself to now happen and to flow through us. We must start thinking like Jesus, though, than to get the Jesus results. Our mind is the battlefield where the enemy likes to come into play, and he will show up with thoughts, suggestions, and ideas. And I'm going to go to the very beginning and show you exactly where it started because his mind games don't change. Matter of fact, the very thing that he gave into, turned around and tempted other people, is the same thing he's tempted with us today. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. 
How you have fallen from heaven, O star of the morning, light bringer, son of the dawn. You have been cut down to the ground. You who have weakened the nations, king of Babylon. But you said in my heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the assembly in the remote parts of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. How did that happen? How? Thoughts, suggestions, and ideas came to him. And he didn't put himself in check like, whoa, 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 whoa. He said in his heart. If he said in his heart, that means that he was pondering on a thing. He was imagining something. See, our imaginations are powerful. My friends, you can use your imagination to sin. Or before you know it, you haven't even got there. And in your imagination, you're raising the dead and laying hands on 100, on 100 people and seeing them all healed. Do you see what I'm saying? Your dreams are, uh, are, are birthed out of your imagination to dream and to imagine big. How do I know that? Uh, you're sitting in the chair of a place that was done just like that. Satan must have been thinking about this before he gave voice to it. Because did you hear what he says? He said he said in his heart. So he had to be thinking about that before he gave voice to it. He was pondering and thinking and using his imagination. Same thing that happened in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Now the serpent was more crafty and subtle, skilled in deceit than any other living creature of the field which the Lord God had made. And the serpent Satan said to the woman, Can it really be that God has said, You shall not eat from that tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat from the fruit from the trees of the garden, except for the fruit from the tree which is in the middle of the garden. God said, You shall not eat from it or touch it, otherwise you will die. But the serpent said to the woman, You certainly will not die, for God knows that on that day you eat eat it, your eyes will be open, that is, and you will have great awareness, and you will be like God. Well, you know the rest of the story. Got news for you, though. She was already like God. Did you see the exact same thing that Satan fell for, is the exact same thing he came in and got Eve to do, and then Adam came in and participated in it? Why? Stupid thinking. Stupid thinking. Same thing happened to Judas. Same thing happened to Ananias and Sapphira. Same thing. Why did they lie to the Holy Ghost? Why? Why did they keep a part of it back for themselves? Thoughts, suggestions, and ideas. And I'm telling you right now, as us as born-again believers, even though on the contents on the inside it's righteous and it's good and it contains all of heaven, if we don't take control of the thoughts, suggestions, and ideas that come to us, you'll back off before you lay hands on the sick. You'll back off before you raise the dead. Why? Because you have to know the will of God so you don't let your mind interrupt it. You get where I'm going with that? Like I said, the same thing happened to Judas, Ananias, and Sapphira. All these thoughts of these people gave in, that they gave into could have been taken care of by maintaining their thought life. My friends, we need what's in our spirits to flow out, and we can't let our minds dam it up. There is a river of life flowing from our spirits and needs to manifest out for people to get a benefit out of it. Healing needs to flow. The miraculous needs to flow. We cannot dam up in our minds by the way we think because it will stop the flow. Our imaginations are so powerful. We can use them for good or bad. We can imagine truths of righteousness and new creation realities, or we can sin with them and work against God in negative death-filled thinking. Cursed thinking will always bring us cursed results. Cursed thinking will always get us cursed results. And it could be something as simple as when you see someone sick, well, that must be God's will. He must be teaching them a lesson. Do you see where I'm going? But once you find out the perfect will of God, then you're able to step up to that situation and you're able to do something about it. Don't allow those thoughts to dam up your mind 
and then stop the flow. See, if we look at Jesus' life, it was flowing so well in him because he knew his Father's will, and he knew what was right and what was wrong and what to accept and what to cast down, that the life of God flowed out of his spirit and it got off into his laundry, and the woman with the issue of blood got a piece of that cloth and got healed. Come on. You ever thought maybe Jesus came to show us what sons and God, sons and daughters of God are able and capable of doing once they find out that they're filled and united with God? What about Romans chapter 12, verse 2? Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but to be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind. Wow, there that is again. It doesn't say renewing of your spirit. You've already been born again. Focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is. How are you going to prove to yourself and to others what the will of God is? How? By thinking right. By thinking in line with the word. By renewing your mind. I used to think, well, maybe God put this on me to teach me a lesson. Before you know it, you're going back and wondering what in the world you did to even get that lesson. Whatever it is. But I had to renew my mind to even hear about healing. That which is good and acceptable and perfect, his plan and his purpose for you. How are you going to do that for yourself and for your others? To realize what's been put in your born-again spirit and renew your mind to it. Here's the thing. This has been made perfect. This hasn't yet. Now our jobs is to renew this and make sure that it lines up with what's in here. And then what's going to happen with your body? It better follow along because now it's two versus one. Instead of two, verses one. Romans 12, 2 in the Passion says, Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. How you think. That tells me that I can stop the flow with the way I'm thinking, even though I have dead raising power living on the inside of me. How do I know this? Well, I'm going to say this very politely as I can, but look at a majority of Christians. And I'm not trying to step on toes to be a jerk because I used to be there. I did not know the will of God. Still renewing my mind to it. I can't sit there and say I know everything in that Bible, but the Holy Ghost does, and he'll teach me when I'm ready to learn. Here's the thing. It's time that we start renewing our mind to who we are in Christ. So when the occasion arises, because it will, it will. I mean, raise your hand in here if you've ever already laid hands upon someone who was sick and diseased. Raise your hands if at one time you would have stepped away from that and been like, oh, yeah. All fingers, all toes. Why? Our mind wasn't renewed in that area. Or we were boogered with religion and were taught, well, you know, um, it's, you know, let's pull the pull the lever. Sometimes God does and sometimes he doesn't. But how did you get out of that into, you know, 100% out of the time? It ain't even a question. Man, come here. I will lay hands on you and my God heals. I know it's his will for you. I know he didn't put that on you because my God is good. No, there's two resumes in this equation. <laughs> one comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and the other one came to give me life. And God don't need Satan's help by doing some business underneath the table and, you know, I'll give you some of my best angels if you'll. You don't do that. God doesn't need Satan's help. Light and darkness don't mix because when light comes in, one of them has to go. And it's not light. But we had to renew our minds to that. We have to renew our minds to that. This will empower you to, to, to discern God's will as you live in a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. My friends, if we want Jesus results, then we need to be thinking the way Jesus thought. What was, in, what was in Jesus was allowed to flow out of him because he was thinking right, and he did not dam it up with his negative mindset or thinking on things. He had to renew his mind too. See, our spirits and our minds need to be on the same page, living in harmony with one another. Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 7. 
Those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves. But those who live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to pursue spiritual realities. In fact, the mindset, the mindset, I didn't put that in there. I just copy and pasted it. <laughs> the mindset. The mindset focused on the flesh fights God's plan and refuses to submit to his direction because it cannot. How many people out there are born again and have resurrection life living within them? I mean, if you really just take just one place, I mean, I'll just say this. By the... By <laughs> By the time Walmart opens in the morning until Walmart closes its doors at night, including the employees that got there before and after, how many of them you think throughout that day, coming and going, employees and come, people coming in, how many of them you think are born again, have the life of God living on the inside of them? I'd say a lot, a lot. Well, we can go as far as this. Well, why are there people going in one way and leaving the same I'm just, hey, sometimes I don't pay attention to it, too. I'm going in and getting my stuff, and I'm wanting to get out of there. But do you get what I'm saying? There, If you look at that like that, there's never excuse of why somewhere where a born-again believer is at, the dead should not be raised. I mean, you can even go as far as hospitals and, and all these places. Uh, it's a whole other thing. And But here's the thing. How far are we willing to go with that? How far do we want to go? What was it in that matrix? I'll show you how deep that rabbit trail goes. Huh. I guess I'm just to the point in my life, guys, where I'm ready to see some results. Dead raising results. Cancer's falling off of people results. Actually, it's just whatever is what that person is in need of results. Because I'm the one standing before him at that time. And I can't assume, well, you know, I might be the person that planted the seed and Oh, I don't like that. I mean, I get it, but what, what, what if for them, we, they don't have time to wait for, for harvest time? and time, What if they don't have time to wait for that? What if the person standing in front of you has less than a week? What if? You get what I'm saying? We have to be ready all the time, every time, to manifest what's in our born-again spirits. I mean, even with, <laughs> even with, Jesus and the woman at the well. Man, he was just, I'm just, he was, he was just simply thirsty. He was tired and thirsty. Wasn't even thinking about it. But supernaturally, on purpose, he released what was in him. He had no idea he was going to meet anybody. The dude is just thirsty and tired. They went in to buy some supplies. And he's like, I'm going to take me a break. And, and he sat there and told the woman, even in the middle of that, if you knew who you were talking to, you would ask me for living water. And then she finally caught on. But here's the thing that's funny. Religion would have told her that she was no good. You can't do that. And Jesus turned around and says, yeah, you've been married five times. And the man you're with, you're not even married to other, e either. But though she went into that town and evangelized it and told him about Jesus. He didn't look for the clean and the perfect and the all, you know. He didn't look for that. What about the woman caught in the act of adultery? Did he wait for her to go and get into some classes and get cleaned up? By the way, it takes two to tango, by the way. I wasn't for sure where the man was in that, but anyways. He snuck out the back door because it was one of their friends. <laughs> He was the only one in that story that was allowed to throw the stones because he was the only one without sin. But though he was the one that stood bef be in between the rocks and the people. Huh. Wow. I don't know why I went there, but someone needed that. Where am I going with that, Nathan? You're loved and you can't mess that up. You're not big enough and your sin ain't going to throw you out and disqualify you. If it did, well, then I guess your sin speaks, <laughs> speaks greater than the blood of Jesus. But does it not say that the blood speaks great, greater than the things of Cain and Abel, which cried out what? Vengeance, justice, but the blood of Jesus cries out forgiveness. So we did Romans 8, 5 through 7. What about 
uh, we'll do it in the NIV. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind or the thinking governed by the flesh is death. You're not going to get, let me just put it like this. The mind or the thinking governed by the flesh is going to get cursed results. It's death. The mind or the way of thinking governed by the flesh, stupid thinking will get you death. But the mind or the thinking governed by the spirit is life and peace. So what are we thinking on? Life or death? Faith or fear, health or sickness, righteousness or sin consciousness. Even though life, faith, perfect health, righteousness, all lives within our born-again spirits. If our thinking is stupid, then we will clog up the dam in our minds and stop the flow. We won't be able to enjoy the benefits of being born again and see our inheritance take place in our life with stinking thinking. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in, in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I don't know about you, but in the very beginning when I heard that, I was like, well, that's great. What became new? Because I'm still five foot one. And I'm still thinking the same. What became new? Your spirit became identical to Jesus in that very moment. It didn't take years to step into it it wasn't jesus taking you over and over and over I mean, when you got born again an angel didn't get some of heaven's windex and pledge and spray on you and wipe you down and say all right he's good no no that old man died on that cross with jesus he went into the grave with jesus and when that resurrection lie you went to the pit of hell with jesus and when that resurrection life came in on that third day and raised Jesus up, it raised you up. It raised you up. And the Amplified, it says, therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. See, your true self is now new. But the mind needs to line up with the spirit so things can flow. Being a doer of the word puts yourself in the right place to let the mind and the spirit line up with one another. Let's say that again. Being a doer of the word puts yourself for your spirit and your mind to flow with one another. They come into agreement. They come into harmony. Like I said, perfection lives in you guys. All righteousness, all power, all glory, all healing, all of Jesus that now is. Right now, he's one with you. You are now one with the person of resurrection. All that's in you. All of that is true. But you can stop the flow in your mind by damming it up. Healing lives in you. But if you believe that just that's just for preachers or for evangelists, and you can't do that. Even though resurrection life is living and pulsating through you, you're stopping the flow and damming it up with stupid thinking. Even though perfection and righteousness now is who you are, if you believe and think that you're just some sinner saved by grace, you, you will act like one because you stop the flow. Even though the dead person that's lying in front of you, you believe that you don't have what it takes, so you back away. Resurrection life pulsating through you, but though you stop the flow. We allow ourselves to think opposite of what the word says about us and the results that the people deserve are not happening because of stupid thinking. We are stopping ourselves with our minds on thinking on the wrong things, even though our spirits are flooded with the life of God, waiting to get on someone and bring them life. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verses 8, Romans chapter 8, verses 10 through 11. Now Christ lives his life in you. Even though your body may be dead because of the effects of sin, his life-giving spirit imparts life to you because you are fully accepted by God. Did you get that? Did you get that? His life-giving spirit imparts life to you. God raised Jesus to life. Get this right here. And since God's spirit of resurrection lives in you, 
He will also raise your dying body to life by the same spirit that breathes life into you. You have that resurrection life in you, and it's time that your mind comes into agreement by that, by renewing your mind to it. Just telling your mind, I don't care. You're going to think in line with this, and you're not going to stop the flow because I'm going to run into someone that needs this life, and I don't have time, and they don't have time to point them to the nearest church and the nearest person because what if they show up and that person looks at them and does what they did to Brother Hagen? Well, son, it'll all be over soon. I mean, we all like Kenneth E. Hagen, but that's exactly what happened to him when he lied in the bed of incurable blood disease. A preacher, someone that preaches the gospel because their mind wouldn't read. Even though that preacher had resurrection life and could have laid hands on that man and got him up, that's how he found in the word where it was written, well, whatsoever things you desire, you brave, believe you receive them right then and there, and you shall have them. If I say unto this mountain, be there a mountain of uh, incurable blood disease, you got to go. That's what he stood on. But in between that time, a minister came in and just patted his hand and said, it'll all be over soon. Unrenewed mind. Why, he had resurrection life living on the inside of him. So <laughs> here's my thing. If he wouldn't have found that, he would have died. And you would have never heard of Rhema Bible Training Center, and you would have never heard of any of that stuff. Or how many other people did that minister go to and maybe say the same thing, that they did die because they weren't, they didn't find it in the word where it was written. They just accepted that as truth and bought it, hook, line, and sinker, and then a couple of days, they're carrying him down an aisle and putting him six feet in the grave. This is important. Lives are on the line because of this. It's time that we renew our mind to what happened in our spirits because the worst thing that I think that can happen to me other than saying depart from me, well, I know that ain't going to happen. I'm born again. I'm his. But I definitely don't want to step through that veil and look back and go, God, are you serious? And then find out that what was in you the whole time, you could have done something about it. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm, that, that would grieve the tar out of me. Man, that would grieve me. See, resurrection life flows and lives in you and me, and it's time we start thinking in line with what the Word says that we have and what we can do and who we are. Because if you don't allow the Word to tell you who you are and what you can do, someone else will come in and tell you different. You'll find who you are in the Word. But the world will be there to tell you something completely opposite. You're a failure. You're a reject. You're a nothing. You're a nobody. Yeah. I mean, believe me, it'll be there to tell you a lot different. See, we'll go ahead and we'll, we're going to end with this. If you want to come up and. We're going to do something different tonight. Now, I got a question for you guys. It ain't going to hurt my feelings. I just need you to be honest. Honesty is the best thing you can do. Did you guys grab a hold of what was preached tonight? Did it get your attention? Okay. So, did you, you, you understand that resurrection life lives in you? It's, there's just not a little dab of it in there, and, you know, throughout the years, the more church attendance and the more meetings you go to, God just reaches down with that little eye droplet, and whoop, there's another. Oh, he went to church today. Go ahead and give two there. God, he, oh, he helped someone carrying groceries from Walmart. What do you think, Jesus? That's what I thought. That's at least ten. No, the moment you said, yes, Jesus, God just said everything that I am, I'm stepping into them in my fullness. They lack nothing. That's what happened. So if you believe that, after I read this last little part to hit, hit, hit everything home, you're going to do something different tonight. We're not having a prayer line. I want you to go ahead and do something. If you're in here and you need prayer, for, and here's the thing, because everything that's in your spirit Anything, everything that is in your spirit is more than enough to meet the needs of whatever that person next to you even says. 
Not like, well, I can handle a hangnail and a headache, but cancer, ooh, yeah. Don, where you at? <laughs> if you've been paying attention to what he ministers in here, it's no, you're it because you're the one there. So I want you to do me a favor. If you're in this room tonight, and I mean this with all sincerity, if you're in here tonight and you're going through something, I don't care what it looks like. It can be something like a physical pain. It could be a doctor's report. It can just be hell kicked you in your teeth this week and you're done with it. You're ready to get up and put your steel boots on and start doing some kicking. I don't care what's happened in your life this week. If hell came knocking on your door and you opened, ooh, crap, where'd that come from? I want you to stand up in this room. Don't be afraid, my friends. Things work when you work. The Holy Ghost is the helper, which makes you the doer. Holy Ghost will meet you when you're where you're at, when you're willing to step, when you're willing to, to acknowledge that. Now, if there's nothing going on, well, then don't. But if there is, I want you to acknowledge that. Now, I want the people that are around these people to, to, to look around. Now, do you believe that resurrection life's on the inside of you? But do you believe that you have the power to raise the dead on the inside of you, to heal the sick? That whatever need this person's dealing with, whether it's physical, mental, or just I need some encouragement. Do you believe that the God in you will give you the exact word, do the exact thing, that the gifts of the Spirit will operate in you? Not because you're something special, but you're a son and you can't get higher than a son or a daughter. Do you believe that? then when it's time, I want you to lay hands on them and impart life to them and blow the hell that's going on in their life out. Take the trash out. Take the trash out. Listen to this. Peter had to renew his mind on the love that Jesus had for him. We think of all these people. Oh, my goodness. Peter? Yeah, Peter. Because he was told that he was going to deny Jesus. And you heard what Don said the other day. <laughs> yeah, right. You must be thinking of one of these other guys. It ain't me. But he did. And he cursed out a little girl. And you think condemnation and shame and the accuser of the brethren wasn't right there to make him feel lower than what he already felt? I can guarantee you he was. Why? Because his tactics don't change. And he's done it to me and he's done it to you. His plans don't change. I guarantee you he came in. And he told Peter how much of a failure we is. I thought, look at you, big bad boy, willing to cut off an ear and go to war. But you cussed out a little girl, you pathetic thing. In that moment of in that pit, of in that time to where he could have, he could have fell off the deep end really quick. He had to renew his mind. He had to do some considering, some pondering on the love that Jesus had for him. And 50 days later, he introduced Holy Ghost to the world. So I'm here to tell you tonight, you better do some reconsidering in your mind. You better tell that thing to shut up and get quiet for a moment and listen on the inside of your spirit where Jesus lives and you'll hear him telling you that I love you. Quit being so hard on yourself. There's nothing that you've ever done and that you could ever do that would make me throw you away or look any different than what I do on your best beautiful day. Son, daughter, you're not big enough to mess that up. If you were, then you were bigger than the blood, and that blood was perfect. So whatever it is that you're dealing with, I just want you to close your eyes, use your imagination in your mind, let it connect with your spirit, and receive what the Father has for you tonight. And for those of you that are standing by these people that are standing up, I just want you to impart resurrection life into them. And if those thoughts start coming where you don't have what it takes, you physically open your mouth and say, shut up. And don't look at the person and say that. <laughs> Your spirit's right, my friends. 
The contents on the inside of you are perfect. Perfect. The contents on the inside are perfect. Just because there's a little dust on the outside does not affect the stuff that's on the inside. Your born-again spirit is perfect. And all the hell that's on the outside that's trying to get in is not greater. But allow your mind to hook up with your spirit and let that stuff flow out. Okay? All right? For those of you that are standing up, and impart some life to them. For those of you that are online, if you have any prayer requests, I'm asking you please to reach out. Reach out. Reach out to us. I guarantee you someone will be there immediately to impart life to you online. There's no distance in the spirit. The same life that's flowing in here and things are happening, the healings are taking place, restoration's happening. It's the same love and restoration and same resurrection life that is flowing to you of those that are online. Promises are yes and amen. All your promises are yes and amen. Oh, faithful you are. Faithful forever you will be. Faithful you are. All your promises, and all your promises are yes and amen. All your promises are yes and amen. Ooh, all your promises, yes and amen. I say yes, and your promise is my confidence. Says your faithfulness, I will rest. And your promise is my confidence, not found in me. Is your faithful? I will rest, I will rest in your promise, it's my confidence, oh, it's your faithfulness, I, I will rest in your promise, it's my confidence, oh. My confidence 
See what I mean, guys? Does it feel good to let that resurrection life on the inside of you out to others? It builds your confidence, lets you realize exactly who you are, proves to yourself who you are and what you are able to do as a believer, as a son and a daughter. So again, one more time, my friends, if you want a text to give, 573-229-0820. If you want to give into good ground, ground that is good ground, that's producing results. I encourage you to give. I love you guys. We have some stuff going on this week. As we mentioned earlier, Thursday, men's, it'll be good. And we get into our three-day weekend. Yes. Yeah, real quick. Um, well, I stepped out a while ago and I talked to my brother. My brother was in a motorcycle wreck. 26 days ago today and you know how motorcycle wrecks go usually pretty sour but anyway he, the worst part he had he had staples in his head and this and that I talked to him from my phone at the scene and they had to take him to Columbia but anyway his foot got smashed pretty good and he was about two weeks in and he had went to see the first time he had seen the specialist and the trauma unit done the best they could the night they were working on it but they done a few things wrong and the specialist goes oh oh that ain't good you know and he runs out and he comes back with bandages uh, medicated bandages because it was looking kind of like infection was coming in my brother's pretty straight to the point he's kind of like me but kind of runs in the family but he asked the doctor he said don't be blowing smoke at me you know <laughs> it's like is, is it what's it look like and he said well if you get infection in it you'll lose the foot he said straight up of course he gets you know he's comes home and he calls me and I'm like oh no no that was not what we said my brother will not be without a foot my brother will finish his race with his foot and it will be right so I go over about two days later and I mow his yard and I been kneel down and we pray over the foot you know and my brother knows the word he may not live it like he should but he knows the word and he's he kept saying the whole time yeah i'm not losing my foot i go no you will not lose your foot i assure you that and we prayed death get off that foot and then i went and called him a while ago because he's seen the specialist today and the specialist told him today that he said i'll tell you something he says uh they were talking about how his foot was already rotating and they told him that it didn't even look like he was going to have to have surgery on it because he broke a lot of bones it even crushed it actually kind of crushed the heel and they said he goes i'll tell you what he said you come back in a couple weeks if it's moved this much more he said i don't even think we're gonna have to do surgery on it so it's amazing i'm telling you <laughs> anyway praise god if that that ought to encourage you a little bit because i could show you pictures of the foot and all of you wouldn't enjoy it but anyway it didn't look good but it did because of god <laughs> so. so here's my thing to go along with that if he wouldn't have known God's will on healing, if the brother wouldn't have known God's will of healing, even though they're both born again and they had that resurrection life Double in them, line. there would be a surgery date, possibly an amputation, all because of the life of God was in him, but the mind was damn and all that flow up oh, to flow true. through because they did not know God's will in that situation. Now ask yourself how many people out there are like that? But now that we do know, one thing that I've learned from a minister is a lot of people do not like these messages right here. Why? Because when they hear them, now they have a responsibility. They now know what God's will concerning a thing. And because of that, that's a miraculous. Something that's saying that we could amputate. If not, we're definitely going to be doing surgery to, yeah, I don't even know if we're even going to do surgery now. That's called God. 
That's called them knowing God's will and them on purpose, with a purpose, stopping hell, stopping death, but imparting life into that. Letting what was on the inside flow because this was an agreement with this and it flowed. I love it. Guys, come up and give. Love you guys. Thank you for everything. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.